Hello and welcome back to Outer Worlds. We have a... What the hell? A herd? In the... Hole? What the fuck? Why are they here? What the hell is going with the woolly cows? Why do we have these guys? Move to you too. Ah, kind of growing on me, but who the fuck got the cows on board? I need to know this. This is not cool. Ah. Uh, please? Uh... Explain this shit to me. Who did it? Was it you? Something busted, Captain? Yes, the cows. You met that auto mechanical clanking around the ship yet? What? What about the cows? Oh, you mean Sam? He's just the sweetest, ain't he? A real charmer, my dad would say. Meh. Have you given him a nickname yet? Nah, but I've been thinking on one. Gotta get to know him better, I think. Maybe ask him what he prefers. It ain't nice to give folks a nickname without him giving you the okay first, you know? Of course, that don't stop Felix. <laughs> Alright. Breaks time over. Wow. Didn't I request no more fertilizer shipments be brought on board? Who keeps ordering these? What's up with the cows? Hey, Sam. Uh... Dust accumulation analysis. 2.5 years. Uh, okay. So apparently we can't talk to Sam. Can we ask anybody about the cows? Maybe, maybe you have to talk, uh... Maybe you have to call somebody. Good to see you, boss. Okay. No, never mind. We, we don't have anything to say. What about Ellie? Something on your mind? I'd like to know more about you. I'm a surgeon by training and a pirate by inclination. Not much else to know, Captain. I like long walks on the promenade and the smell yeah, of spacers grown up. And we... I was hoping for my personal. Well, my so it seems so like... No complaints here. Uh, we just explored that conversation path. So... Guess that's that. What's up with the cows? Ate up. You're the one responsible. Welcome back, Captain. Now that you have acquired a nav key to Stellar Bay, would you like me to contact Dr. Wells? Uh, doesn't this guy have a life? <laughs> I don't believe so, Captain. Transmission incoming. Well done. You'll love Monarch. Exotic climate, violent native species, fascinating culture, really. You'll need to speak with Hiram Blythe. He's known as the information broker, and for good reason. If anyone knows where I can find those chemicals, it's Hiram. I need those chemicals to revive the Hope's colonists. They can help us fight back against the board. They can help us set things right. If we don't put a stop to the board, they're going to drive this colony toward a complete societal collapse. You'll see what I mean when you arrive on Monarch. <clears throat> can you just send him a message? Oh, I've tried. I haven't been able to get through to him at all. Silence from the system's own information broker? Not a good sign. Any idea why? Oh, could be any number of reasons. Incarceration, a period of copious drinking, a severe case of the sleeping sickness. Better to be sure than to resort to conjecture. You'll want to hire the services of a skilled guide. I recommend a hunter by the name of Nioka. Frequents the drinking establishments of Stellar Bay. Very hard to miss. Once you have everything you need, make your way to Hiram Blythe's compound. Okay. I, I have some questions for you. All right, I'm off. Best of luck. Everyone on the Hope is counting on you. I leveled up, but it's not super important for me. It's mostly for the companions. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? I would like to watch a video. 
I would like to continue our conversation from before. Forgive me, Captain. I would rather not discuss Alex Hawthorne today. I am feeling discombobulated. Was there another topic on your mind? No. Are you sad when you remember Hawthorne? No, I am sure I cannot feel emotions. The memory has merely disrupted one of my processors. Glitches can be quite uncomfortable. It was my fault he died. How so? I should have predicted the statistical unlikeliness of success of my captain's actions. In fact, I did, but illogically disregarded the results. Why did you do that? He asked me to trust him. How exactly did Hawthorne improve your design? Captain Hawthorne attached 98.4% of the ship's processes to my computer, thereby giving me near total control. I have been programmed to deftly calculate navigation vectors through asteroid fields while also operating our ship's toasters. Alex also taught me the concept of a personality. He was quite delighted when I crafted one in order to better engage with him. It was basic in the beginning. Called this personality? That just mean. Where did you come from originally? The information in my memory banks says I am an autonomous digital astrogator created by, redacted, on the date of, redacted, for the express purpose of, redacted. I have not yet decided if I should attempt to uncover the missing information regarding my birth. I asked once. Alex did not build me and would not say who did. Hmm, that's awful now. <clears throat> Seems like Ada might be the one, of, well, maybe the biggest mystery on the ship. But what's up with the cows? Okay, Neoka. Speak with Neoka at Monarch. Retrieve the missing passcode at Monarch. Review a fastest mining archive on Hawthorne's terminal. All oh, right, we have to use the captain's uh, terminal. Right. Uh, search fastest mining archive cartridge for keyword weapon. <clears throat> that captain sold Harris something uh, called the rearranger. Then left before we discovered the uh, damn thing doesn't work. Only thing it rearranged is the number of bits on Harris's cart. Looks like some strange tech or a weapon. Maybe a scientist can make something of it. Uh, Doc Caulfield couldn't save Lem. Now I gotta arrest Harris for his murder. Confiscated that weapon he used and stored in Bertie's office for now. Uh, figured the uh, least the site supervisor can do is fill out the ter fill out the forms for whatever the damn thing is. I don't know how I'm gonna detain Harris. Not like we got uh, prison cells on this rock. And this is just information. Henry, indenture, 35 years. He's dead for 18 hours. Plan force trauma, weapon unknown. Took a good whack to the noggin. Did. So. We're gonna track down Reginald on Monarch. We have two missions leading us to Monarch, one leading us to Scylla, another one leading us to Monarch, and searching for clues. That's just generic space. That's Scylla again. So it seems like uh, Monarch is where we should go, but maybe I should just go for a rest before. That made me somewhat thirsty. <clears throat> so, drink two of these, eat some food. Peas, now that's tea. Um, pass the pack. Let's eat one extra. And we got. Yeah. Um, uh, good job, Sam. So, yeah, whatever. 
let's go. I guess we're going to Monarch. So, we know about Terra 2. We have two two ways to go here. We know the Groundbreaker, we know Phineas's lab. We can't go to Typhoon or Hephaestus. Uh, it seems like we can go to Scylla. But most of all, we should go to Monarch. Yeah, we only have two choices here. Warning dangerous, Cascadia landing pad. Uh, I guess we're gonna go to Stellar Bay landing pad. We are now in orbit above Stellar Bay, Captain. No blockade is a match for my piloting skills. I might put an extra gun here. So if you want to do physical damage with a light assault rifle, we can. I also gotta make a decision about the companions. Uh, it's a little odd. Shouldn't they have uh, points to spend? So I can spend my skills. I'm not sure on what. We can up the determination. I can also up the long guns, which would give me long shot slash. Uh, yeah, long, long gun, uh, headshot, and weak shot damage by plus twenty percent. It seems pretty okay. Uh, determination is decent too, I guess. But let's just go with long guns. So I'm more of a help in a uh, in a fight. Two hundred percent crit chance. And uh, I'm really good with crits. I have the intelligence, extra crit damage. Also, this is also extra crit damage. Also, we can sneak attack for extra damage. And if they shoot them in the head, that's again extra damage. So it works. Actually, 67% uh, is giving us the 200%. Long gun sway. I don't really care about that. But yeah, this should be decent. And I'm not sure if we ever gonna go higher than that. At least it's. Not anytime soon. That should be okay for now. 576. <clears throat> and we can check the crit chance of this weapon. We see that crit chance is 20%. So with me... Well, it's gonna be 60%, I guess. Some guns have higher. And the crit damage is also increased. Anyhow... Uh, let's go, I guess. Wait, why am I so thirsty? Because of the lovely up? Ah, let's drink a juice. Uh, that should be good enough. <clears throat> Anyhow, guys. Let's go. So, we're gonna take Parvati. I don't sure if we're gonna take Felix. Let's take uh, Ellie. Also, there's a chance that... Uh, Whoever this new tracker is, is gonna be a companion. We still have one companion. And if I know these games, uh, you tend to get the companions early. You, well, companions tend to be front-loaded. So, you're gonna find most companions... Well, this is pretty obvious, I don't have to go into it, but yeah, that's how it goes. Sterile Blay, and it's not... Ridiculously big. Oof. Really? I'll keep it down. Ellie and Parvati, actually they can level up. Okay, fine. Recover 25% health and fatally wounded. Equip time. Companion ability damage, that doesn't really matter. So we can either go with extra range damage or extra skill with Ellie. So my heal becomes better. So currently my heal is, my medical is 67 because of Ellie. But if we pick this medical, 
And possibly we have the skill bonus. No, uh, it, it's only a 10 bonus. So it doesn't get multiplied by the le leadership uh, skill bonus. So it's only a flat 10. But even then, it's uh, 77 medical. And uh, changes the... The Adreno from healing 25% to healing kind of like 40. Actually more than that. So... Yeah, this is decent, but the question is about Parvati. Will we go for more engineering? My engineering is currently 80, so I can push it up to 90. Or will she go for more damage? Do I really need that much engineering? So, reduces the repair cost. We don't have the base skill unlocks here. And... It's also sometimes used for checks. So, I don't know. Maybe Parvati is gonna go for just damage. Right? Because engineering is useful, but I don't really need it right now. Although I need it a lot more than Ellie is also not in the team. Ellie is also providing 23. But it's kind of like a good question. What should I do? I can just go with extra engineering. I don't think we need the range damage. Let's go with that. And this way, from instead of 28, I got 90 engineering. Wow. <clears throat> anyway. I was kind of hoping that we're going to get double. Double of 10 as well. Which would have been uh, kind of good. Oh crap. I don't want to die. I guess if I was a psycho, I could just start shooting right away. How the hell did I get down? Oh. I don't think there's anything else on this landing pad. Hey there, Grim. I hope you're a guard and not some uh, guy who wants to shake me down. Hey, hold on there. I gotta sign you in. Don't think I've seen you around. That means you must be new to Stellar Bay. You are new here, right? Yep. Whatever. I'm not here for a chit chat. Well, that is my ship on the landing pad right next to you. You seem surprised? You must have seen those UDL gunships on your way in. There's only three of them these days. Still, they tend to scare folk off. What are you doing here? You may not have heard, you being new, but Stellar Bay hardly ever gets off-road traffic. Us being cut off by the board and all. Which means I never get to do this part, but I've been practicing, so here goes. On behalf of Monarch Stellar Industries, welcome to Stellar Bay, home of the freshest Sal Tuna and Halcyon. Please state your name for the records. Uh, I'm Alex Hawthorne. Swell. There's one for the logs. I'm even gonna give you your own entry code. I'm not supposed to do that. It's against procedure, but Mr. Sanjar isn't so strict about the rules here. Besides, I got a lot of empty entries to fill. Is Stellar Bay really that isolated? We don't get ship traffic in town. Only off-worlders who do make it out here are Sublight. They got a base in Fallbrook. And thank the stars for them, or we would have run out of Rizzo's Purple Berry Crunch years ago. You're not what I expected to find a monarch. What the fucking hell is that supposed to mean? Oh, that'll just make Mr. Sanjar's day if you tell him. The board makes up lots of nasty stories about raptodons and cannibals and whatnot. But that's all outside our walls. Mostly. Are you saying that the board's been lying about this place? Oh, sure. They make Stellar Bay sound like a rotten place, but it's not so bad. Get a good breeze going, and the sulfur smell mostly covers up the fishy smell. 
Anyway, Mr. Sanjar's got lots to say on that subject. Kinda goes over my head, though. Alright, thanks for that. Mr. Sanjar will be mighty pleased to meet you. If you see him over at headquarters, maybe you could tell him I did a bang-up job of welcoming you? <laughs> oh, and if you're headed that way, maybe you could do me a favor? What? I got this Rizzo's Rangers Tosswell poster coming in on the next sublight shipment. Signed by the Black Hole himself. Only I haven't heard anything in a while. You think you could check with Celia to see if it's come in? Okay, I guess. I couldn't really say I'm just a fan of the game. But the fancy collector types say the more people see these things, the less valuable they are. And I figure my poster's been passed around by more than a few people by now. Sure, I can ask about your poster. Thanks a bunch! Celia works for Mr. Sanjar in the MSI building next to the bar. She's always there, so you can't miss her. Alright. I don't think we can enter most of these buildings. At least it doesn't seem like it. This place may not be as big as it seemed. Rizos. Oh my god. These are some good piece of armor. 46, 46 helmet, level 19. So four levels above my current level. Forty-six. I think I already have a forty-six. Close to it. This looks pretty good. Double 46 armor and 46 helmet. I don't have a 46 helmet. Not even close. Five hundred DPS shotgun, but yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah, this is a little weak. Anti Cleo's auto went. So this looks pretty good. It's it's level nineteen armor. I don't know. I think we should buy it. Like I have a lot of money. I think this is just fine. Even though it's coming from a vending machine. Uh, actually, I probably could have uh, avoided buying two. 55. 51. 46 Ah, this is fine, although I do have a 41 armor now That I can maybe use myself Let's check it out Inventory I use that crap, which gives me long guns but we can just go with elite armor. This also gives me dialogue skills and leadership skills. Seems pretty good. But of course, we can uh, put that on the other armor as well. But this is a medium armor, so it's already bad. Stealth skills, minus five. Yeah, that's a bad penalty. Is this really worth selling, or we should just scrap it? Elite troop armor. We can break it down. The free parts. That's... That's not quite worth it, but... Whatever. So we got free parts again. So for this, actually getting free parts might be worth it. Oh, uh, yeah. 
But we're just gonna run around like this. Uh, for the extra dialogue. Hopefully I'm not gonna find like better armor like two meters away. MSI Sentinel, wow. Nice gear, mate. Oh, uh, okay then. What are the chances of all the times and places we could have been born? Yeah. We're here. Light Actually, my armor is uh, a little bit uh, suffering a little penalty here. From Earth, going about our but lives. I don't plan to use it for very long, so I guess it doesn't matter. Earns his meals. What are you talking about? Buy now, buy now. 36. Oh, that's not the best helmet. The best helmet we're going to have is a 46. This is a heavy helmet, but it's not super high level. It's level 11. We got level 19 heavy helmet. Which is just top tier. Okay. Oh, Nilka. Resident. Resident. McGuire. Well, well. Isn't often we see new folk in Stellar Bay. First drinks on me, stranger. Ah, oh, that's nice. Thanks. Enjoy. If you plan on sitting through Nioka's stories, you might could use a few. I could use a few and tell it them myself. Now what can I do for you? How well do you know Nioka? Anyone who spends any amount of time in this bar is bound to get to know Nioka. On account of her being here so often herself. And I don't mean that unkindly. Anyone who's rid us of as many beasts as you have is entitled to a few drinks. Something else I can do for you? Uh, you said you're not used to seeing new faces around here. Not since Amber Heights. These days we have more leaving than coming. Off to join the Iconoclasts or some such. Why is this place called the Yak Club? Thought it had a fancy ring to it. Name's the first advertising anyone sees, after all. Do you have a yacht? Are there any yachts in Stellar Bay? Nope. But a man can dream. Ooh. Alright, let's see what you got. What? What is this trash? I'm not having any of this. Nyoka? And the little bastard's slippery, right? On account of its blood, so it's, it's sliding. All over the place, trying to crawl away. Getting so I can't tell the... Tell the blood from the mud. Hey, uh, over here. Um, excuse me? Don't interrupt, it's rude. But I gotta get in there. Get right in that baby rap stomach and dig it out. If so much as a drop of stomach acid got on that medallion, I... Shit, I don't know what I'd do. Might be I'd hunt every damn wrapped out there. Right. What are you staring? Wait. You ain't from around here. Who are you? Oh, uh, I'm light. Pleasure to meet you. Ooh, charmer. Don't get a lot of that around here. Folks mostly grump at me about how I should join the MSI payroll. Nice change of pace. Buy me a drink, will you? Uh, I think you had enough. I'll stay and chat, but you look like you had enough. I'm told you can get me to an information broker. Well, 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 well. Let's get down to brass nuts then, shall we? Brass... Wait, that ain't it. Brass rats? Let's... Let's talk business. I'm headed back out there after I sober up. You want a guide sooner than that? You have to get me something to clear my head. Is that more alcohol? What do you need? Outstanding! 
Our dispensary here maintains a stock of, uh, well, I don't rightly know what they are. Steroid or caffeine somethings? Pills. They're very good. Very good, eh? I'm cut off for the month on account of needing one just about every damn day. But I'm sure you've got your wily ways. Fetch me one and we'll be all set. Right. You mean cavanoids? That stuff, just a stimulant. Well, they work. We got a deal or what? All right, I'll be back. What? Wow, what a party. Auto loader operator with another auto loader operator. I'm going. Wait outside. On my way. So, Caleb Herrick. What about you? New face, huh? You from Off World? Yeah, Captain Light of the Unreliable. Yeah, no, no, Captain Hawthorne of the Unreliable. I'm just gonna keep saying that both. <laughs> a ship captain? Well, I'll be. Here, let me buy you a drink. Consider it an MSI welcome. Why don't you grab a chair, sit a spell, and revel with us? By the smell, he's been reveling enough for you both already. What are we celebrating? Me and my friends have taken our destiny into our own hands. We're untethered, free of responsibility and worldly cares. Is that so? Well, as long as we don't run out of bits. But until the windfall's gone, we're riding high. See, we just walked out on our work. Had enough, we did. So now we're striking. I see. What could be so bad it made you walk off the job? It ain't any one thing but the sum of it all, having to work longer shifts for less bits. And the wages we do earn don't cover as much as they used to. Our supervisor Velma goes on and on about quarterly profits and meeting quotas. But that ain't what Sanjar promised us. Velma refuses to negotiate, so we're refusing to work. We won't go back until she agrees to pay us fair and proper. Us on Monarch, we're free from the board, you know? We have the right to lobby for better hours and pay. I happen to be pretty good with negotiations. <laughs> what a shot. I wouldn't doubt it. You look like the type who tends to come out on top. Not like us cogs. Trying to be the squeaky wheel, but just getting deadlocked. <clears throat> it's been days, but Velma won't even hear us out. Maybe you could just make her listen to our demands. Demands. Probably you shouldn't call it that. Ah, uh, mediate on your behalf. You would do that? We sure are lucky you decided to come up to the patio today. I knew drinking up here would be good for more than the view. Alright. We don't have to talk about Velma. Uh, I would just talk to her. I need to get a caffeine pill. So... Seemingly... There's nothing here. We got a... A workbench. I can use to maybe enhance one of my guns if I really want to. I don't really want to though. Eh, whatever. Wrap mask and canid eye right here. Empty bin. Man. Ooh. <clears throat> Please, I need your help. Two shots. What's up? Oh, thank you for stopping. Everyone acts like nothing's wrong. Like my little boy isn't at risk of being eaten by some vile creature. Please, you have to help me get my little Tucker back. He ran away and is going to get himself killed. Oh, I, I just know a raptodon is melting him with acid as we speak. It's more dissolving than melting. That is not helpful. <laughs> Ah, uh, your child is missing. Uh, where you last see him? Oh, 
I just knew you were a good person. Agnes, I said, this is the woman to save your little Tucky. And I was right. He ran out into the wilderness a few days ago. I warned him about the raptodons, mantisaurs, and marauders, the toxic sulfur pools, and poisonous plants, but he didn't listen. Oh, law, Captain. A youngster won't last long in a place like this. Please, can't we help? Please, won't you go and find my boy? I don't know, it kind of sounds like crocodile tears to me, mate. And also, this kind of sounds like a bandit ambush. That's my tingling telling me. I'll help you find your son. Thank you. Oh, I know he'll be safe now that someone's able to fetch him home. You look for him in Amber Heights, you hear? It's down the road southwest of town. I'm sure he made it that far. I just know it. And if you find any of them iconoclast indoctrinating my boy, you punch them in the mouth. Tell them what I think of them luring little boys away from their mamas. It's immoral. Okay, there's like a 30% chance that uh, she actually uh, lost her boy. 70% chance of a bandit ambush. If not for her last line, I would have said the chance of bandit ambush is roughly 99%. But why would she go and take... Why would she go on about uh, punching some Icono people? <laughs> Maybe to put me at ease. Again, kind of depends on how good she is at this. Also, she seems to be pretty chill now. Look at that. It's like, yeah, well, that's good. My boy is saved. Wouldn't you want as many people as possible uh, saving your boy? Hmm? Because just because you told me your story and I said, I didn't say too much. I said, like, maybe I'll look into it. Would you just be satisfied with that? Wouldn't you want as many people as possible looking for your boy? Hello, stranger. Can I interest you in a raptodon tongue? Or maybe some canid toenails? Ugh. You look like a woman who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts. Uh, why would I want any of that? I don't know. Celia usually buys whatever I have, and Mr. Pickett seemed real interested. So I thought maybe I was onto something. Mr. Pickett? Franklin Pickett from Edgewater? That's him. He'd been here years. But he always talked about going back to Edgewater one day. Who's Celia? She works for Sanjar at MSI. She's also Stellar Bay's biggest collector of canid incisors. And I should know, because she buys them from me. About Mr. Pickett. He came to Stellar Bay years ago, just before the board cut us off. Ended up stuck here. He was always real interested in our monsters. Manta Queens, especially. Let's talk about something huh? else. Like what? Oh, good. Celia hasn't... So this is what he's selling, and I'm not interested in it at all. Alright. What else we got? Zhang Shuren. Well, well. The only new folk I ever see in town are sublight runners from Fallbrook. But you don't look like one of Catherine's. What can I get you? Uh, what you got? All sales are final, unless you threaten me. I'm kidding. Don't threaten me. But it's so worth it. It's just, just bad stuff. You're selling subpar crap. Low level. Baseball hat. Uh, I'm not too into this. So, we can go in there, I guess. Let's try it. Any idea? What can I expect? 
moved their office. Could I get another advance, Mr. Nandi? Just make sure it's properly logged. Greetings, and welcome to Monarch Stellar Industries, producers and purveyors of the finest salt tuna in Halcyon. What can I do for you today? What was that exchange about? You having money trouble? Grim asked me to check with you about his Tosspot poster. Yeah, that's very important. You know, sending you is the first bright idea I've seen from that man, because I told him to stop bothering me about it a week ago. I still don't know anything about it, but if you want to help him, Velma's the one to ask. She's in the warehouse. But I'll warn you, Grim wore her patience thin a long time ago. Okay. Earlier I overheard you s you say you were having money trouble. Or is he not paying you on account of how he tried to fix a thing his own self and busted it even worse and then said you wasn't fixing it fast enough so he's docking your wages again? What? Not that I got any prior experience with such. Not at all. Mr. Nandi treats us all right and pays us well. I just spent most of my paycheck on Raptodon acid. The fuck? Do you normally blow your money on Raptodon parts? Is it at least a drug? Do you normally blow your money on Raptodon parts? Laws, no. Sometimes it's canid teeth or mantis worm wings. Whatever Sebastian has in stock, really. The fuck? Why are you buying so much from Sebastian? Are you like really into him? So I can talk to him, of course. He doesn't get going about much else. I reckon she's got a little bit of a squish on this villa. <laughs> He's sort of the strong, silent type. Unfortunately, my apartment's kind of filling up with his stuff. And some of the neighbors are complaining about the smell. Uh, just to ask him on a date? I couldn't. What if he says no? Hey, maybe you could ask him for me. I mean, a no would still be bad, but it won't be quite as embarrassing if you ask. Oh, Mr. Nandi's doing that thing where he breathes through his nose real slowly. I'd better get back to work. Wait, I'm curious. What do you see in Sebastian? He doesn't talk much, but he's got this quiet intensity, you know? Like there's stuff going on inside his head that you have no idea about. Plus, he's got great legs. It's hard to find a man who doesn't skimp on lower body exercises. Good to have standards, I guess. <laughs> I know what I'm looking for. <laughs> oh, man. All right, I think it's official. I like Ellie more than I like Felix. <laughs> wow, I like this situation. <clears throat> there are other fish in the sea, Celia. But this this is actually, well, not exactly this, but this is actually, I wouldn't say common, but it does happen from time to time. People just, like, do not have the courage to, you know, to roll the dice, I guess. To try to take it maybe slow in, in odd ways. Well, obviously, I don't, I don't think he's exercising, he's just hunting a bunch of monsters. <clears throat> there are the fish in the sea, Celia. Not in Stellar Bay. Everyone else who isn't taken either smells like Saltuna or they're my boss. <laughs> <laughs> a man with a good smile and a proportionate upper to lower body ratio isn't something to pass up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. We're standing next to your boss and like, hey boss, I'm into you, but <laughs> you really want to be with someone you can't talk to? <clears throat> Yeah, it seems like you're just uh, projecting your idea, uh, or just your your. You just think of positive attributes of him. You th you think that just because you, he's not speaking much doesn't mean he's uh, he's he having he, he's having profound thoughts or whatever. I guess shutting up instead of saying dumb shit all the time, like I do, is like can, can be like a plus <coughs> as well. But I don't know. I'm just saying you might be disappointed, but hey, like you do make a good point. I mean, okay, fine, but still, your uh, <coughs> approach is just the worst. 
Uh, you really want some? Uh, want to be someone you can't talk to? You think that's what I'm looking for? <laughs> You're funny. What? Is it just the legs? Is it just the legs? Uh, that's all I need to know. Sorry. Sometimes I get carried away. I'll talk to you later. I would have liked to continue this conversation. This is just too fun. I have to say, the, the writers in this game are doing an amazing job. And, and the logic. And usually the game is... I wouldn't say like usually. The game is just very logical. You know, I can use my brain and... Uh, and kind of, you should make sense. And the characters, like, it makes sense. Like, very good writers. And and you can, you don't have to just, like, turn off your brain kind of adventure. But, like, you know, you're kind of encouraged to use it. And, of course, like, good jokes, good fun. But it's it's not exactly, like, like completely, uh, completely, like, a total joke. It's not a total joke. Like, this shit happens, you know. It's within the, it's within reality. So, let's talk. You look like a woman who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts. Uh, I'm not. But I'm really glad that my character is a woman, so he's <laughs> he's <laughs> hitting on me with this line. Let's talk about Celia. Huh. I haven't seen her in a few days. But I've been meaning to ask her how that wrapped on acid is working out. What? I hope it's working okay, because no one else really seems interested in this stuff. Ah. Uh... She likes you. Ooh. This is a good question. Should I say that she likes you? Or should I say that would you consider going on a date with her? That's a good question. I think he would more likely to say yes after I say that she likes you. But is that necessarily a good thing? I'm not so sure. Because if you know that the other person is like super into you, like going on a date is like, is like I you you might like them, you might not like them, but like you know that you're like back. So that's that's I think that's great. I, I suppose you know, you know you really don't have to roll the dice that they're not gonna like you maybe, but I, I think uh, like what she thinks about you is um, is uh, well not really much. The strong silent type with profound thoughts, not saying a damn thing. Okay, let's just say that she likes you. I'm just trying to hook them uh, together as much as I possible. And I don't think she's uh, really looking for the, I don't know, uh, philosopher here. Uh, she just thinks he's hot and uh, she's a little awkward about it. Nice of you to say. I like her too. No, you're not getting it. Shit. She's interested in you romantically. Now I'm gonna say she really likes you. Wait, I see what's going on. She put you up to this so she could get a discount, hmm? Oh no, that's not it at all. She's smitten with you. You smited her. Smote? Smoot? Smoot. Don't get me wrong. I'd like to give her a discount. What? She's a real fine lady. Always talks nice and slow, so I understand. But if I give her one, I won't hardly make a bit, on account of no one else having any use for raptodon tongues. <sighs> she doesn't want a discount, she is attracted to you. Percy, don't take my word for it. Spend some time with her, I promise she won't ask for a discount. <laughs> <laughs> you sound pretty sure. And she is awful nice. Okay. Give her a chance. Give yourself a chance. Take her someplace nice. Okay. I'll do it. Once her shift ends, we'll go someplace nice. Maybe to Chef Raymond's. That's the spirit, Sebastian. Be yourself. Between you and me, Captain, I'm not sure Miss Celia knows him too well. But we can hope, right? I want them to be happy. Uh, me too, I guess. Wow, Parvati. I fucking love it. I don't, I don't, I don't, can't imagine not taking Parvati on the journey. Because... <gasps> Shit. Sorry about that. I clicked mouse one by accident. Hopefully, 
shot in the heart. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry about that. Oh, I, I'm really glad that you're not mad about it, but I guess uh, I'm putting you in very heavy armor, so even if this mistake happens, you're gonna be just fine. So, Parvati was the one who needed uh, help not so long ago, and now she's actually the love guru. Well, not exactly the love guru, but like it's good to see her getting uh, more confident. Uh, so... I got your date, Celia. Have you talked to Sebastian yet? What did he say? He said he'll go on a date with you. Okay, but how did he say it? Did he sound excited? Or like he was just agreeing to it? Was he like, yay, a date with Celia. I've secretly been waiting for this. Or was it more, sure, I don't have anything else going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Celia, you want to be a companion? I could totally get you uh, on board, and uh, uh, my only regret is that we can't have a bigger team. He likes you, Celia. Just don't ask him for any discounts. <laughs> he's, he's very hesitant about those discounts. Look, you got your chance. Have fun and don't overthink it. Mm. <laughs> She's not gonna get the discount part. All I know is that if you act this crazy, you'll send him running. She's definitely acting crazy. Run, bro. Run, bro. <laughs> but other than her very questionable way to approach him, she doesn't seem crazy. Ah, he likes you, Celia. Just don't ask him for any discounts. Not to worry. If I never buy another Raptodon tongue, it'll be too soon. Oh, so. Ah, look at me going on. I'm sure you've got other things to do, and Mr. Nandi's giving me that back to work look. Anyhow, thank you. Yeah. Also, <laughs> uh, you probably want to get those parts out of your apartment uh, sooner rather than later. Not the best stuff. Seems like Rizos are selling the best stuff. MSI Commando. Sanjar Nandi. Well, new business turns up at last. Celia, didn't I tell you our new statistics-based advertising model would be a hit? That you did, sir. How can yield improvements of 26.7% not quicken the pulse? How can 32% cost savings not moisten the loins? You've often posed these very questions. Clear my schedule. This newcomer has a meeting with me. Yeah, uh, I do. Actually, I don't really mind uh, those uh, numbers. You know, as long as you can, you know. If, if it's objective, but like no one's gonna do that, like. Usually, ads are just uh, complete garbage. Complete garbage. Useless. You always want to tune out because it's the total garbage. But if it was like super objective, but I suppose some. You know, that's not how you get most people. You just want to affect their feelings, not, not their logic. Like, hey, this product, you know, we give like uh, five years of warranty on it. It's, uh, it has excellent reviews. Uh, but customer reviews and like it's really good price compared to the competition, whatever you know, just like com com I don't know, I don't think it would even make sense. I don't know, ads are kind of dumb. But in order to get me, it would be need to be uh, logic based. So I, it w it wouldn't even get me. I'm just I got my guard up so high <laughs> that it just doesn't work. <clears throat> But I suppose it's still try to build uh, brand loyalty. At least not think of the brand as as, as unknown. Like, I suppose they achieved that with ads, but not necessarily brand loyalty. That's very generous of you. Now you have a meeting with me. Oh no, 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 no. Uh, okay, let, let's go. Celia, will you make a note of that for my self-review? Very generous. 
Noted. But not so generous I can't drive a good bargain. Now, who sent you? Rizzo's, perhaps? Or Auntie Cleo herself? I'm just looking for the information broker. Hiram? Why, he's probably still out at Devil's Peak. Not that he's had the courtesy to notify me, at any rate. But if you're here for him, I suppose that means you aren't here for Saltuna. Hey, it could always be both. Now, now, there's no need to humor me. I'm used to this particular letdown. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like you're having a rough time, Mr. Sanjar. Are you doing quite all right? Oh, don't worry on my account. This is merely the latest in a long line of professional erotic and athletic <laughs> disappointments. <laughs> I had hoped that livening up our advertisements with enticing figures would draw the other corporations back to our bosom, but it seems we're back to the drawing board. Actually, I wouldn't be against uh, transporting some of your tuna. Uh, I can like transport it to many settlements, like as long as I get a, a decent cut. I mean, like, why not? If I pop by here, like, obviously, I probably wouldn't make this like my main thing. I mean, it kind of depends on how much supply you guys got, but. It's not completely out of the question, so I wasn't totally joking. You know, if we can just leave here with a uh, reasonable, with a good deal. If you guys are looking for a uh, transport to, yeah, that that could work. You know, what exactly are you hoping to accomplish? Thanks to the so-called hazard clause, Monarch has been cut off from the board's resources and protection for ten years now. Now, we've kept ourselves in business by trading with individual corporations, but given the off-the-books nature of those transactions, such arrangements are precarious. And you're tired of scrounging and scraping by, is that it? Sounds like you're freer than anyone in Halcom. Why not embrace it? Exactly what I would have said, if I'd been paying attention. You talk like Graham. Freedom always sounds nice, doesn't it? It makes a rather pretty slogan. But if you sit down and tally up the costs, how you provide for yourself in the absence of aid, how you protect yourself from a hostile galaxy, it starts to lose its shine. So what do you mean to do about it? Well... Mr. Nandi here has a rather ingenious plan to get MSI restored to the board. On our terms, mind you. But will that help the people here, Mr. Sanjar? Keep them fed and safe? That's precisely what I'm trying to do. And if our advertising scheme hasn't borne fruit, then perhaps it's time we took matters into our own hands. Enough preamble. What's the plan? It's a two-pronged approach. The first part involves seeing Stellar Bay properly defended. Fine, but how do you mean to do that? With a Bolt 52 cartridge, of course. If you can get us what we need to rejoin the board, starting the Bolt 52, we'll be able to become one of the most productive and secure cities in Halcyon. And you'll have a powerful ally on the board. Interesting. Uh, what is this Bolt 52? Is that some kind of a combat robot? What is it? Why, one of the strongest defenses in Halcyon. An extremely powerful ordinance. Never realized fighting the bureaucracy could be this interesting. It is quite the rush. Ordinance or ordinance? An ordinance, of course. We do things in a civilized fashion here, not like Graham's iconoclasts. There's nothing the board likes so much as paperwork. Can a legal document really be that important? Once you have a Bolt 52, what's... No, can a legal document really be that important? If I didn't know any better, I'd say you just crawled out from under a rock. Forms and procedures are everything in Halcyon. And this one is located in the old arms building southwest of town. 
which used to be part of Stellar Bay before we had to move our walls in. And these days, it's overrun with marauders and raptodons. I don't have perception, but I guess I'll go get your bolt 52. Do be careful. I've lost more than a few people to marauders and raptodons out there. Oh, and while you're at it, there should be a terminal in the arms building with some dangerous information. Perhaps you could delete it so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Uh, before I go, I need to ask you about something. What can I do for you? I have questions about MSI and the good old days. I met Grim, the landing pad guard. I see. And was his delivery of the MSI authorized greeting up to snuff? He did a bang up job. Well, that's excellent. I'll see that your feedback makes it into his review. What else can I do for you? I have a question about MSI and the good old days. Then it's good that I keep such meticulous notes. How did MSI get kicked off the board in the first place? I've asked myself the same thing many times, especially seeing as the legal mechanisms we employed were part of the board's own bylaws. Do you mean that you initiated your own removal from the board? Not intentionally, though that's technically true. For many years, this planet was home to as many corporations as Terra 2. Back then, it was known as Terra 1. Oh, interesting. What happened to the other corporations? As you may have noticed, this planet has more than its share of hazards. And as the other corporations began to tally their losses, they decided to pull out. But not MSI, right? Our leadership at the time certainly wanted to. But there were others of us who saw an opportunity. The chance to improve working hours and conditions, to reform MSI from the ground up. How forward thinking of you, Sanjar. It's humane, but it's also good business sense. Exhausted, sick, and malnourished workers are not productive workers. Even a cursory review of the data bears that out. I hope you'd treat them nice, whether it was good business or not, Mr. Sanjar. That's what being a community means. Treating people right, because it's the right thing to do. Like that's what you saw in Edgewater? Come on, people look out for themselves. <sighs> a noble thought, Miss Holcomb. Unfortunately, noble thoughts rarely sway board policy. Anyway, we learned of a loophole in the corporate bylaws that would allow MSI to claim ownership of the entire planet once the other corporations pulled out, creating the perfect environment for us to enact these new reforms. Take it your leadership didn't embrace your ideas? Seems very optimistic. How would that work? No. He laughed in our faces and insisted we'd be relocating to Terra 2 along with everyone else. Yet yeah, here you are. Yes, some of us stayed behind, and as the most senior executive remaining, I ended up in charge of what was left of MSI. Must have pissed off some real big suits to get stuck with that. On the contrary! I wrote lots of very important reports on behalf of top MSI officials before I was able to achieve this position. I moved forward with our planned reforms as well as our strategy to assume ownership of the planet. Yet not long after I renamed it Monarch, the other corporations dislodged us from the board and began an official campaign to paint us as lawless savages. <laughs> so they really want to torpedo your... <sighs> Well, they, they have an entire planet. If they could get this under control, they would be the most powerful co corporation. But not if the other corporations sabotage them. And that's the plan, I guess. While everyone is busy going for the easy pickings on Terra 2, MSI is just going for something big. But that could be something huge over time. But why would they do that? I don't know. Everything we did was legal and above board. We followed their rules. 
and yet they still found reasons to declare us outlaws. I do think there's something useful in a governing body like the board. Something that keeps us from anarchy, but I dearly wish it functioned differently. Why exactly do you want back on the board? Why wouldn't anyone? They own nearly all the resources and infrastructure in Halcyon. If you can't beat him, might as well join him and reach into their pockets. To be on the board is to be part of the colonial community. And being cut off means slow strangulation. They treated you pretty roughly. It is worth uh, going back to that. They don't really have much of a choice. I'm not a man to put pride before progress. If membership on the board can ease our hardships and provide us with opportunities, then that's the path I mean to pursue. Besides, I'm hopeful that additional leverage on our part will allow us a more equitable relationship. It makes sense. What kind of leverage? Don't get ahead of yourself, sir. Yes, yes. It'll be easier to explain once we have the Bolt 52. My hope is to maintain the reforms we've managed here, and who knows? Perhaps once we're restored, we could spread them to other corporations. Sounds good. That's what they don't want. Let's talk about something else. What can I do for you? I gotta go now. Okay. No, I get it. I, I got a pretty good uh, idea about the situation. It's in the back room. Busy workers, I see. So I won't disturb them. So, wow. This place is it's definitely bigger than Edgewater. Not, not huge, but it's uh, definitely bigger than... Uh, I thought, at first. Anyway, uh, it was a good time to take a break, so thanks for watching guys, and see you next time.